Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Major risks of buying altcoins. Now, this is not some sort of FUD. Keep your pants on, chill out. If you find yourself getting triggered or upset, just stick it out. Stick out through the video before you get into the comments section and call this guy is a fudder. All right, this is a, an extension of the previous two videos. So if you haven't seen those, go and check those out. I didn't think I would have a third video, but what we've just recently seen in the last several hours is a cryptocurrency go to zero, basically zero. It's down 100%, basically being rug pulled in the DeFi space. Other ideas that I had around old cryptocurrencies, which are essentially going to zero against their Bitcoin value. So this is why I've called the video major risks of buying altcoins. And I tell you to go and check out the previous two videos after this video. I'll leave them at the end of this one. So without further ado, make sure you like the video up, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon. Let's dive in. So the previous two videos for reference are these ones here. Why altcoins drop versus Bitcoin explained and trading mistakes to avoid. Uh, so check these out after this video. Now, today's video, we're looking at major risk of buying altcoins, important crypto investor mistakes. I know I've got a lot of these coming out, but they're a good time to look at, especially when we are in a bear market where we're down, we're in a downtrend, essentially. I still see this as an overall bull market for Bitcoin and cryptos, but there are major risks when it comes to buying altcoins on the dip, especially against their Bitcoin value. Now, I've got here, what are we doing? What are we looking at today? Keeping it very simple because that's part of the plan, which is why I always look at keeping it as simple as possible and uh, allowing myself to have less decisions to make because the more decisions we make, the more mistakes we can make. So the plan, we want to reduce our risk. We talked about this in previous videos. It does sound bearish, reduce risk, reduce risk, but this is what the professionals do. So if I'm learning to be a professional, then this is what I want to implement in my own plan. Simplify, simplify as much as I can. Life and investing just makes life a hell of a lot easier. Now, this has got nothing to do with being bearish or bullish or any other sort of noob stuff that you hear about on Twitter or YouTube. Leave the opinions at the door about the FUD and all that sort of nonsense and just look at it for what it is. As I said, two previous videos, we can go into more detail, leaving, leaving those at the end of this video. So the crypto that has gone to zero is Iron Finance. Dear community, please withdraw liquidity from all pools. We will share a post mortem as soon as we have a better understanding of this bank run. That's a post mortem. USDC collateral is available for redemption as normal. It is down 100%. CoinGecko, Iron, Titanium, Token, Titan, down 100%. You can't really get any closer to zero than it currently is. BTC value, zero. Dollar value, zero. People are crying in the comments sections who have invested more money than they could afford to lose. It's uh, it's a bit of a mess over there. But essentially, this is what happens in the DeFi space if something goes wrong. But this can happen to many other cryptos, as I'm about to show you guys. So I've got Ethereum, I've got XRP, I've got Zen, I have LTC, so we've got Litecoin. I've got quite a few examples up here, and I want to share these with you to explain what we are looking at and how to make life easier. This one startled me, but it is the data. I can't change this. This is what is on the charts. So I'm starting us off with two cryptos, which we should all know, Bitcoin and Ethereum. I'm comparing the US dollar charts, Bitcoin USD, Ethereum USD. Now remember the plan. The plan is to make things simple, reduce our risk. That's all it is here. And I'm choosing the two biggest cryptocurrencies we can get. We know, or well, we should know by now, we've been through a big peak. If you're just new to the space, you'll you'll get your chance to get through a peak. We are now in a dip, a pretty solid dip, over 50% correction on Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. And we know that new people come into the markets at the tops. June 2017 was a top in the crypto markets. And I'll show you this in just a moment on the other chart so you can get a better idea. But essentially here, we had the top on Ethereum at uh, this price of around $433. Now we take it to the close of May and I'm using the exact same prices and times on the Bitcoin chart. So that gives us uh, June 2017 through to May 2021. We have 1,164% for Bitcoin and 500% for Ethereum. 
Now, why am I choosing these points? Now, I'm choosing the June starting point for Ethereum and to measure our returns from because this was the exact high for Ethereum against its Bitcoin value, which means Ethereum has not produced a better return since that point in time unless you obviously bought it at the lows. But we know from experience that many people come into the markets at these late stages and buy the tops. That's what happens. It happens time and time again. And so from this point, if we had sold everything or just bought Bitcoin instead of anything else, as I'll show in just a sec, then we would have much better returns than buying Ethereum, even Ethereum. But the disclaimer to that is, if you can time the market and stay with it, you don't have to be super smart or genius about it. You just need to be with the market and see these times come in and be extremely patient. 2019, 2020, 2021. Then you can get the gains on the USD value and the Bitcoin value. And I'm not putting down other altcoins. This is just what the charts show. This is just what the data shows. So we're looking at the tops on Ethereum in June. Now, it hasn't been that high since. Will it ever get there? We don't know. If Bitcoin shoots up from this point, this might crush the ETH BTC pair and this might push us all the way down and it would just have the same dollar returns or maybe better dollar returns in Bitcoin. The only way that you get better dollar returns out of a cryptocurrency, Ethereum is this example, in this example, is if the ETH BTC chart, as if the alt versus the Bitcoin chart also went up while Bitcoin was going up. This is an example, Dogecoin. I can't believe it, but Dogecoin is one of those examples. This is Doge BTC. Bitcoin was going up this year, no surprises there. Doge was going up against its Bitcoin value this year as well. This has been one of those cryptocurrencies that has outperformed the dollar and the Bitcoin value. You can see Doge on the USD also, sky high, rocket high, but Doge BTC, that's where the game is. Now, I did not expect the Doge BTC chart to skyrocket this far. And after this sort of skyrocket, I expect it to come down as well. Um, so maybe it comes down even further than I can expect it to come down. So they're the things that we're keeping in mind as well, especially with the risks of buying altcoins at high prices. So that, that's an example of the market actually, well, one cryptocurrency outperforming Bitcoin while Bitcoin was going up. Not even Ethereum has really been able to do that too well, but it still has outperformed Bitcoin through sections. You know, we're up and back again. But overall, since January, we are we had do have better returns on our dollar values than Bitcoin. However, having held it from 2017 or previous cycles, we would still be worse off uh, rather than just holding Bitcoin from that period. Now, let's use Ripple as another example, and I'll show you a few more after this. We have Ripple in May 2017. Another huge spike. This is the dollar chart, remember? So there's massive returns there. From May through to the top, we have about 700%. However, Bitcoin value, there's the May top. There is the January top. So that is the second peak for XRP, for Ripple. That's a lower top. So you would have been better off buying and holding Bitcoin from that peak in May of 2017 and holding it all the way into the next top. And we're reducing our risk because we don't lose all of this Bitcoin value all the way back down again and then hope for another run up. So that's uh, XRP USD. XRP on the BTC chart still has not recovered. So if we had bought XRP at the top in May and then held it through to the next top and made our gains and then still held it, we would then lose all of our Bitcoin value. Not only would we lose the dollar value, but we lose 90 or so percent of our Bitcoin value. So that's a lot of risk, a hell of a lot of risk, just to hope that we'll get another pump like that. But many people, so it's exactly new investors, you know it yourself as well, if you're sort of new to the space, you only look at one chart and just think, all right, my XRP was 20 cents, now it's 80 cents. But Bitcoin has done a better return in that period, plus it's not exposing you to the risk of these other altcoins where they can get lawsuits from the SEC. Now the game's getting a little trickier as well because we're bringing ETH into the whole game. And this is where cryptocurrency is starting to get a little bit more involved to understand which cryptos are the ones we want to be holding. I have Zen here as an example. Zen has been on a downtrend against Ethereum since its inception, since it's come out here, or at least it's been on Binance back in 2018. 
And so that's getting lower and lower highs, lower and lower lows. Zen against Bitcoin has managed to rally. So buying it at these lows through the bear market of 2019, 2020 has been a good return. But if you'd bought it in 2017, 2018, you still would be better off just holding Bitcoin through that period. Zen against the US dollar, however, looks like a much better return. It's much higher than its 2017 highs and January 2018 highs. But even still, Bitcoin has done better returns because we know that by looking at the Zen Bitcoin chart. So the same period in the dollars was all the way down here. And this current period was all the way up at around $180, whereas we're still well below where we currently are on the Bitcoin charts. And that just tells you where the risk and reward is. Litecoin, Bitcoin, massive downtrend, seven years, seven and a half years downtrend. Better off holding Bitcoin for that same period. Litecoin USD, on the other hand, looks okay. You can get some dollar returns here, but you'd be better off holding Bitcoin. Massive double top as well, by the way. Not to say that we can't go above this in the dollar values, but in terms of the risk, the risk is much higher holding a cryptocurrency like Litecoin rather than Bitcoin. Now, I've just got some big losers from 2017, 2018. Icon, ICX, absolutely crushed. Again, this doesn't mean that they can't go up. It's just looking at it in terms of the returns. And look, maybe this is a good place to be buying it and riding the market up a little bit. I don't like that risk personally because it hasn't proved itself this cycle already and I don't expect it to continue proving itself any further, especially if Bitcoin is to go up further. I think that's just going to crush the Bitcoin pairings even further for a lot of these altcoins. Icon USD, on the other hand, doesn't look great, but you'd think that this is uh, performing well in your portfolio when really it has done pretty much nothing against the Bitcoin value, just increasing your risk, exposing yourself to these cryptocurrencies. Ethereum Classic looks amazing. Look at this massive spike. Had a couple of peaks here and you notice it's the same periods around that June and December, January periods. But if we look at the Bitcoin chart, here is that period again. There's the May period which is the May-June period, and here is the January-February period. So much lower highs. You've lost all your Bitcoin value from May through to January-February. And then again, the Bitcoin value is next to nothing. We've lost about 98% from top to bottom. And from those previous highs, it's lost about 85%. Next crypto, IOTA, same sort of deal. It looks the same. This is the dollar, IOTA dollar. Highs, lows, 99% loss and the dollar value is still sitting somewhere around that dollar now, but I, uh, IOTA against the Bitcoin value, it still has not done anything. And you can see this looks very similar to uh, ICX and Litecoin, Litecoin's even worse. And uh, against Ethereum, it's done even worse. And so this is where I start to look for better returns. I'll be looking at Bitcoin and Ethereum because these cryptos are still getting crushed against Ethereum value as well. Now, we don't have enough data for ADA, so we'll leave ADA for another video because we need to see what happens after a bull market cycle. But so far, ADA is looking to perform reasonably well, especially uh, looking at ADA ETH. You can see that the Cardano Ethereum chart is breaking out of its highs that was set from uh, 2018, 2019, 2020. So that's a good sign so far, which just means it's improving its value against Ethereum and Ethereum is at the moment improving its value against Bitcoin. So it looks like it's starting to keep pace and just um, start to outperform both of those at this point in time. Of course, the old godfather of everything is the Doge father. And the Doge father has outperformed absolutely everything, which again, blows me away. But what can we say about network effects and meme coins? Well, we can say that they blow everything else away. So I hope that video explained the risks, or at least the way I see them when it comes to investing in cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin. Now, you might have noticed on my Instagram that I do post updates of my superannuation, which is your retirement fund, and I've turned that into an SMSF. New Brighton Capital is doing a special until the end of financial year for the Aussies, which is, of course, 30th of June for us. $300 free credit when you use this link, which is in the description down below. Just mention Pizzino. In that, book yourself a free 20-minute consultation to understand a little more around how to get your superannuation into an SMSF and, of course, purchase cryptocurrency, which is pretty much what I've done with my super. I want to see that thing grow as big as possible and take as least risks as I possibly can. So without getting into the financial advice, 
go and talk to these guys if you are interested in getting your super fund into cryptocurrency. Now, I hope you found some value from that video. Make sure you like it up, subscribe to the channel, comment down below your thoughts on the risks of altcoins. Am I being too conservative? You let me know in the comments down below. Follow me on Twitter. And of course, if you want to understand more about investing and trading, check us out on the Investor Accelerator. Link to this is in the description down below. Otherwise, I'll catch you on Twitter to talk about all of the latest crypto and investing content over there. Is, uh, it never stops, basically. So join us over there and also on Instagram for daily Q&As. I'll catch you guys at the next video. I hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you stick around till uh, the end of this video so you catch the other two videos which are part of this one explaining Bitcoin values against their altcoin pairings and how you can improve your investment portfolios. Like, share, subscribe. Until next time, have more fun to get more done.